JC Reese is joining me. Uh, he's the author of The End of Animal Farming, How Scientists, Entrepreneurs, and Activists Are Building on an Animal-Free Food System. JC, welcome to the program. Okay, uh, great to have you here. Let me ask you a question. Uh, you claim that within 100 years we might be animal free. Um, mm. What do you, uh, fascinating, uh, and that, by the way, that later we will be judged for our actions today, uh, but that's also fascinating. So what do you base both of those things on? Yeah, there are two big factors. So the first one is something called the expanding moral circle. You know, as someone interested in a variety of human and animal rights issues, it seems that over the centuries we're coming to care about not just more and more humans, but also more and more non-human animals. So we're caring about animals used in circuses, dogs and cats in our homes. You know, if you go back a century ago, people didn't have the pets like they do now. Things like um, cat burning, so a public uh, spectacle where cats were actually, you know, um, set in a net above a fire in public. Public was popular in France. And this is just kind of absurd to think about today. And it seems like farmed animals are the next step in this expanding circle. Uh, second is more of a self-interest concern. So animal agriculture is extremely inefficient. So if you're using animals for food, uh, you put in around 10 calories for every one calorie you get out, or around 10 grams of protein for every two grams of protein you get out as meat, dairy, or eggs. And that's just something that humans have a interest in not doing just for profits, just for getting more output for fewer inputs or for environmental concerns. You know, if we want to feed the world sustainably by 2050, we need to move on from animals used for food. So, you know, I want to break down that uh, argument a little bit more. First of all, I did not know about what those uh, the bastards in France used to do. Uh, mm -hmm. They're obviously terrible people. Um, <laughs> No, I get the context of time, uh, and obviously some people still eat dogs. Although I, you're certainly right about the expanding circle of morality, because uh, I, I believe now in America dogs are valued more than humans. Uh, mm. Like if cops shot a dog, there's going to be hell to pay. Uh, they shoot shoot a person, not guilty. Uh, that, that's how it is in America today. Anyway, um, so out of the couple of reasons that you mentioned, I'm curious why you think we should eat stop eating animals. Is it mainly the environment, mainly the efficiency? Uh, is it mainly the cruelty uh, in, mm. in the way that we do our farming uh, presently? Or is it that you think it's predominantly that, that they have some degree of consciousness and that it's an immoral thing to do? Yeah, so I got involved through the perspective of effective altruism, which is a growing community of do-gooders focused on not just human issues, but also considering animals. And that means we're thinking by the numbers. We want to use science and evidence to be as effective as we can with our altruism. And if you look at the scale of animal suffering in the food system, there are over 100 billion globally, 100 billion animals. Uh, over 90% of them globally are on factory farms. That number is 99% in the US. And if you think about the day-to-day -day life of these animals, confinement and disease, you know, genetic suffering, growing so much meat that they topple under their own weight or suffer from heart attacks. It seems like a really miserable existence. And from that ethical perspective, that was initially very compelling to me. But many people who get involved with this issue start to see it from the different perspectives, start to notice that it's the environmental, you know, elephant in the room, especially, you know, this week with the UN Climate Summit, we're seeing that, you know, meat, dairy, and eggs are fully on the menu there, despite animal agriculture contributing more greenhouse gas emissions than the entire transportation sector. So I've gotten on board with the other aspects. Uh, I'm not as on board with the nutrition aspect personally. I just don't find the evidence that we have right now for human nutrition to be very compelling, uh, but I think from a climate change perspective, from antibiotic resistant perspective, uh, so over 80% of US antibiotics are fed to farmed animals, leading to these superbugs, these incurable diseases. Uh, and then of course, from the animal welfare perspective, that's what's most compelling to me. Yeah, so let's uh, break that down a little bit more, JC, because mm -hmm. uh, in the continuing evolution of Cenk Uger, uh, so uh, you know, I was a Republican, now I'm very, very progressive, this is, uh, the network I lead is called Homo Progressives, and and I, I get it. Uh, I'm a bad guy for being a meat eater, uh, uh, but I do love it, uh, and I confess to that. I agree with you that in a hundred years they'll judge us for what we have done, and they'll say they knew. Cenk knew he had JC on. JC told him we they had the conversation, but did we? Um, so here's my point about that. Look, I get the climate change thing, and I fight against that on. Uh, uh, in other ways, and, and I think the government taking action is way more important, uh, although I'm not minimizing uh, recycling, et cetera, et cetera. 
I'm definitely against the, the cruel way that we do farming now. It's just preposterous and, and horrible. The part I guess that I'm that I don't know and is a sticking point for me is does their consciousness count? Mm. Um, and maybe it's an absurd thing for me to emphasize, but I do emphasize it because, like you said, they have they we make them so fat they have heart attacks. Mm. If I thought they actually were like, oh my god, oh this is terrible, oh, I'm having a heart attack and I feel terrible that I'm dying, then I go, no, I can't do that. I don't want to eat that chicken, right? Yeah, but. But there is different levels of consciousness. So walk me through that idea and, and where you come out on it. Exactly. So there's this whole gradient of moral concern or the abilities or the aspects that we attribute to a certain being in the world. So if you go all the way down to inanimate objects, you know, they don't even have pain or reactions to their world. Uh, they're not seeking out certain outcomes and avoiding others. Whereas if you get even to insects, you know, they seek out certain things, they kind of form goals, they'll seek out, you know, food, obviously they'll avoid heat or other sort of pain. Um, but then we could think of more sophisticated aspects. So for example, honeybees uh, struggle to integrate information in their head. So when you have a certain smell coming into to your brain, when you have a certain sight, uh, humans have this oneness of self, or at least I do. And I, you know, we have to speculate about what other beings have, but there's some evidence that honeybees lack some of this integration. And then as you go further and further up, you know, maybe closer to humans or at least closer to animals like chimpanzees, other primates, cetaceans, elephants, uh, cetaceans are like dolphins, um, you get fewer and fewer of these factors. But I think the fact remains that uh, when you go down to farmed animals, so chickens, uh, fish commonly farmed, uh, cows, pigs, they show all of the evidence that we see in cats and dogs and other animals who we clearly recognize as moral subjects. So I don't think there's a basis for discriminating uh, against them in that sense. I, I think we should consider them the way we consider our dogs and cats at homes, uh, even if we do have some sort of gradient. And even if we wouldn't trade, you know, one insect life for one human life. And this doesn't mean necessarily that we should all, you know, go vegan right now. People are in difficult situations. Some people in the world today don't have as much of a choice in what they eat, but it means collecting Effectively, we should move away from animal farming. You know, if what you can contribute, Jink, is to discuss this topic on your network more, that's fantastic. And you can play a role in chains. Just as when we look at, you know, human rights issues of previous centuries, people have participated in many different ways in social movements. And, you know, even myself today, I'm not taking every single step to avoid any amount of animal suffering caused by my own diet or other behavior. You know, some animals are killed in combines used for, for crop fields, for example. I'm not fully considering insects or these other beings that 200 years from now might make me be seen as, you know, not fully woke or not fully understanding um, whom we should consider in our moral circle. But I think it's up to us to just participate in the ways that we can and to be pushing forward the conversation, to be above, you know, the median line, to be reducing our meat consumption, to be joining in the movement in some way. And that's different for all of us. Right. Well, okay, that makes me feel better. Uh, so uh, I, I can go have my steak because I had you on the network, so I'm good. Um, Maybe one steak, you know, <laughs> cut out a few of them, reduce vegetarianism. Yeah. Right. And uh, I had John Sally on here along with Moby, and they did a show about veganism. And Sally afterwards said to me something similar to what you're saying, uh, but he went even further. He said, uh, sometime in the future, they will view meat eating as the same as owning slaves. And so that's a pretty harsh statement. Uh, and he gets to make that statement. But I think that there's at least some gradation of truth in that. And so I know I'm going to be judged at some point, but but look, I, there's a fly in the studio right now, and during the break, I'm going to kill it. Okay, I just I can't. Uh, I and I know that I have hosts here, Sam Shocker, wonderful animal rights advocate. She used to be on Pop Trigger. She's now on TV, uh, and she, she, it's going to break her heart to know that I'm going to kill the fly, but I'm going to. And and yeah. and and the pigs, on the other hand, like I don't like I don't care about the fly at all. I, that's I'm not even having that conversation, but. Mm -hmm. But the pigs are really smart. On the other hand, bacon's delicious. Ah, okay, all right. But one thing that we should be able to agree on is just treating, especially the farm animals that have more, that are more sentient uh, beings, uh, with at least just a modicum of decency. And here in California, we I proudly voted for the ballot measure uh, that sixty one percent of us did to make uh, thing animals cage free. But Unfortunately, a lot of that's not really what it seems to be, right? So in the, with yeah. our last uh, point here, 
Can you let us know what the reality of that situation is? Yeah, so I wrote an op-ed in The Guardian when my book came out discussing the issues with humane animal farming. And actually, you know, on the opposite side of the political spectrum, Tucker Carlson and another Fox News host were discussing how animal agriculture might be seen as slavery in the distant future. So everyone's starting to think about it. They're starting to think about the way we treat the beings as a whole. I mean, a big part of it is that when you're using sentient beings, whether they're humans or animals, as raw materials, as forced labor, as machinery in any economic system, you're going to get suffering. It's just very difficult to consider someone's interests while you're using them, while you're exploiting them in that way. And I think even if you just care about animal cruelty, there's still a very strong case for caring about animal rights and for supporting even personhood for animals. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm excited about uh, the technology coming on board. So I think that's the second thing we can all get on board with, which is as people are developing plant-based meat, dairy, and eggs. So like these new bleeding be uh, veggie burgers that are out, like the Beyond Burger and the Impossible Burger, to many people, they're indistinguishable from beef. And certainly they look similarly. And it's really exciting to be able to bridge the gap between people's values and their behavior. Because for decades, you know, vegans and animal rights activists have been screaming from the rooftops or yelling with bullhorns, you know, think of Peter or something. And that's just most people have struggled to change with their own diets. But once we get this technology on board, we'll have the coupling of that with the activism, with the ethics. And I think that's the reason we're going to see such rapid change over the coming years. All right, JC Reese, uh, the book is The End of Animal Farming. Thank you for joining us and enlightening us. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Like what you see? Click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from the Young Turks.